In this video, I'm going to be reacting to some content from a creator called Clint with a K. This guy's been going strong making videos for about 10 months now. And I just wanted to come on here and boost his channel a little bit because the quality of his videos are really, really good. They're mostly instructional, talking about sort of some little known features and and how to integrate courting into your daily life and even why courting can, can benefit everyone. So I would encourage you guys to check him out. I'll put a, a link to a um, uh, his affiliate code as well so that if people do end up getting inspired by his content to get a, uh, a courting enabled keyboard that you can get a discount on that and it can support his content creation. So let's just go over to his most popular video. I'm gonna click play. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to rant a little bit. Sorry in advance. I, I don't know if I actually have time to like do a really polished and produced video. So I'm going to try and do this all in one take. Let's have some fun with it and get it started. Years ago, a guy named Riley Keen was accused of cheating after winning a keyboard typing competition. In another situation, monkeytype.com, a popular typing site, wouldn't put him on the leaderboard after clocking a whopping 500 words per minute because his score was suspicious. And let's be honest, it is questionable given that the average typing speed is 40 words per minute. But here's the thing, he did so monkey type does automatically flag and remove immediately any score that's over 300 words per minute. Uh, there's a conversation that, that is probably still documented, hopefully, on the monkey type discord between me and the lead developer of monkey type. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, I love monkey type, great site. Um, and I also want to caveat here the difference between sustained words per minute and top words per minute, which I think is important. This That distinguishment didn't really exist. It's something we created in the Caracorder community and also distinguishing between familiar and unfamiliar text. So the mission of Caracorder is to raise the average person's typing speed from 40 words per minute up to 250 words per minute. And this the 500 plus words per minute videos that I've created have come from specific requests from my commenters and videos on, on my channels that have said, hey, I really wanna see you, know, you type at you know, insane 500 plus words per minute speeds. And so the only way that I can actually accomplish that is by one, enabling spurring on my device so that I don't even have to release one chord before moving to the next. But I also have to, to prime my brain at like 300 to 400 words per minute, ultra high staccato runs and then like one out of maybe like five or 10 times, I can actually come close to a speed of 500 words per minute. It's not something when I'm like busting out emails on a daily basis, that's not a speed that I'm realistically hitting unless I'm courting say like a, a phrase or a sentence. Um, and most of the videos that I post are around like the 200 to 300 range. Um, that's sort of the, um, I try to keep everything close to that 250 um, goal, which is the mission that was just tied to the mission of care quarter, how we define the speed of thought. And that's a lot more realistic in terms of, of considering how fast a, an advanced user or semi advanced user might, might be able to the speeds they would reach when, you know, typing emails or messaging on, on discord or whatever. All right, let's continue. Did not use a bot to rig the system, nor did he bribe judges to fudge the numbers. If he did not cheat, how did he win? And how did he win with outrageous speeds that people find it hard to believe that his scores were legitimate? He used a device called the Carecorder, which he built with his team and it was originally designed for disabled individuals. Instead of using buttons, the Carecorder used... So one of the things that Clint just said there was that Caracorder was designed for um, people with disabilities, and that's absolutely true. So my background is in accessible tech. That's one of my passions. And the original intent and inspiration of Caracorder was to be able to provide a means for people that are nonverbal or people that have limited dexterity uh, and mobility in their fingers to be able to to output text and be able to communicate at the same speeds that the rest of us take for granted. Uh, so my dad was nonverbal growing up, which I think has, has made me um, come to understand like the importance uh, of being able to communicate on an equal playing field with uh, both your, your peers, your coworkers, and, and of course your loved ones. 
Um, so I've been really excited to see the the amazing response that we've had for like our new web app for um, for Wearquarter for Voicebox, which helps to digitally kind of vocalize um, people's corded text interest to allow them, you know, to participate in uh, in meaningful conversations. Um, there, there's a viral video on our TikTok that that showed a, a salesperson, um, or sorry, a business owner that that was wanting to use Caracorder um, in order to lead those sales call, calls that inspired the development of that voice bar. Check out that video; that's a whole other thing. And then it also was was an amazing experience to see um, voice box used for live captions. So you, if you open up the web app, you can put it in your pocket. Uh, we had a um, one of our deaf users come by and I was able to just talk with, he hung out here for like three hours. We're just like talking. We went out to a restaurant. We're just like living our lives. And if it weren't for a voice box, if it weren't for a care recorder and this technology, we would not have been able to communicate in that way. So it's, it's really cool to see the impacts that it's already having. Uh, and we're only scratching the tip of the iceberg right now. So I'm really excited to see how far that goes. The uh, real quick, before I, I continue the video, I could talk about this for hours. The, the care recorder, of course, it's it's not just used by people with disabilities. And that's a, a really great example of the curb cut effect. Um, there's a great 99PI podcast on the curb cut effect that I would encourage anybody to listen to. Uh, basically, what the curb cut effect means is that when you go out of your way to help people that are marginalized, it's something that ultimately benefits everyone. And I think care recorder is a really great example of that because, of course, as our team developed this, uh, we very quickly realized, oh, wow, I mean, anybody that uses a computer can benefit from this, from, you know, inputting faster, from typing at the speed of thought, not just, you know, people that, that don't have use of their vocal cords or, uh, or full use of their fingers. Uh, so maybe I'll do another video um, specifically on the curb cut effect. I, I would love to do that, but probably I've talked enough for now. Let's continue. He built with his team and it was originally designed for disabled individuals. Instead of using buttons, the care quarter uses switches that you can push either up, down, left, right, or inward, and each switch corresponds to a specific character. This design lets a user type faster because of less finger movements, but the switches aren't the only things that make Keen type at blazing fast speeds. The care quarter also allows him to cord words. This is called cording, and it's what enables you to type faster and physically possible on any other keyboard. So one of the things that he touched on there I think is really important. A lot of people see this device, this Caracorder one. And by the way, you can get a QWERTY version of, of Caracorder, and even we just released the dongle that can, can upgrade um, non-Caracorder uh, non keyboards to be able to cord as well. But people see this, and they think that like the unique shape is what's... You know, different about it. They've seen lots of wacky keyboards before and they um, sort of assume that it's like a, a new layout it is the innovation, but that's not the case. This layout is des designed around the concept of fluid corded character entry, which is what, uh, which is the title of our intellectual property. So if you want to see the technical documentation, just look it up on Google Patents. But the, the whole layout is designed so that character entry and corded entry should be working together in harmony rather than one being prioritized over the other. There's never been any any text entry system that does that before. There are corded text entry systems, macro cording specifically, like stenography that prioritize cording. And then there's also, you know, like the typewriter or, or QWERTY keyboard as a system that prioritizes character entry. There's never been a system that allows you to seamlessly use both of those and when we look at human computer interaction in the modern age, the, that is, that's so important because we can't discriminate on alphanumeric entry when it comes to cording or when it comes to, um, to text entry because we use keyboards for so much more than just typing words. And the other huge benefit to fluid corded character entry is the fact that you can you learn character entry as a starting point, as a base, just like you're learning to type. And then you're able to, to intuitively transition from that character entry to corded entry as opposed to having to learn like a new theory or a new language and have to like swap back and forth between a writing device versus like a typing device. Um, that, that is one of the reasons why we've seen, uh, check out the, my history of, of cording video to learn more about like 
the difference in Caracorder and Sonography, Caracorder being a platform versus you know Sonography being um, being a, a very specific system, which you could run on a, a CCOS or Caracorder engine powered device. Uh, enough ranting. I'll uh, let's continue. Now we write by hand at about 15 words per minute. And when the keyboard was invented in 1867, output increased to 40 words per minute. Great. But we've been stagnant for over 140 years. Why is it that the average person today is still typing at 40 words per minute, the same pace as it was in 1867? Aren't we supposed to see improvements in our speeds given that technology has advanced a lot? One explanation for this stagnancy would be the limitation of the design aspect of the keyboard itself. You press one button, it outputs one character. Let's say you have a long word like responsibility. The speed at which you type the word is limited by character by character typing. Having a good keyboard and high dexterity fingers help, but the bottleneck is still there. With the character order, you mash a few switches together and the word gets produced in the blink of an eye. Another reason why we're still slow stems from history. It's been said that the keys on the original keyboard were laid out in alphabetical order. But the key bars kept jamming because typists were typing really fast, so Christopher Latham Scholes, the inventor, rearranged the keys to QWERTY to prevent jamming. We don't really know if that's true or not, but Scholes came up with a few other layouts before he died. It's safe to assume that he wasn't satisfied with his original layout, which was the QWERTY. At some point in his life, he's... So a lot of people hate on the QWERTY keyboard, and I, I'd never want to give the impression that that Caracorder users are like these elitists that, oh, we're better, we don't use the QWERTY, we've evolved past that. I think it's really important to meet people halfway, which is why we've developed stuff like the Caracorder X and, for instance, the, uh, the Caracorder Lite, because QWERTY actually, in all reality, is the most impactful invention, the typewriter, in terms of raising the average person's ability to output text at higher speeds. So he, he even he covered the, the, two, the two key numbers, 15 words per minute average writing speed all the way up to 40 words per minute. So that's almost a three-fold increase in the average person's ability to transmit text. And that, when you get back down to the care quarter mission, that's, that is the primary goal is to close. The average person can read at 250 words per minute. We know that the human brain can process information, specifically text information at those speeds, and there's really no reason why we should not be able to also output in addition to input text at those speeds. I sold the design to Remington Arms, a company that had the means to bring the typewriter to market. And boy, did they really bring it to market. A product that might have been just a first draft was mass produced and we still use it to this day. So, is the Caracorder the device that's going to solve this problem? Not everyone is convinced. For starters, it's expensive because it's a new product that cannot benefit from economies of scale. It costs $299, so it's easier in the pocket to buy a keyboard on Amazon for $15. We'll have to wait several years before it becomes affordable, assuming the company survives. Relearning how to type on a new device is also a challenge for most people. The QWERTY is so ingrained in our society that swaying people to use a new design is difficult. Another convincing argument that one user on Reddit shared is that the Caracorder doesn't have labels. If you leave a keyboard to someone who has never used it, they'll be able to type words on the screen without supervision because the buttons have labels. With the Caracorder, you'll have to rely on a quick reference guide that is printed separately. And let's face it, those prints can easily get lost. You'd think the Caracorder team would give up though. After all, the arguments against the device are sound. But like any smart company, they listened to the market, got feedback, and developed another product in response to that feedback. This new device is called the Caracorder Lite. Introducing Caracorder Lite. Caracorder Lite functions exactly the same as your keyboard with one powerful twist. While you can still output individual characters, Caracorder Lite can also output entire words or phrases by pressing mini keys simultaneously. You don't get the advantage of switches, but you don't have to learn to use a new layout either. Their original goal on Kickstarter was $10,000, but the device was so popular they ended up raising $100,000. About a year later, they ran another successful Kickstarter campaign with the Caracorder X, a USB that can turn any keyboard into a qwerty enabled device. They might come up with other products in the future as well that might blow our minds, but we'll see. This essay was prompted with the question, what if one day we could transpose our thoughts into written words at blazing speeds? Let's say there will be a technology in the future where you can directly turn your thoughts into words on the screen in just a blink of an eye by just touching your device. Can you imagine texting someone, hey, how's it going, in a split of a second? Or can you imagine writing a book in days, not months? The experience of seeing words appear on your screen at the exact moment that you think them is absolutely incredible and why we believe so much in Caracorder technology. The goal of the Caracorder... So, we get a lot of, I guess, questions about this slogan here that's actually coming across the screen right now. This text was typed at the speed of thought. That's the trademark slogan of Caracorder. Like, what does that actually mean? So... When it comes down to it, yes, we, we have, because I think that missions and goals are important to be measurable, we have set that as 250 words per minute. 
but it, it's so much more than that. The, to, the best way to understand this is, is to imagine if you lived in a world where it was illegal to, to talk in words, that you had to talk one letter at a time. T-H-I-S space I-S C-R-A-Z-Y. It, it sounds absolutely insane, but that is the modern standard in human-computer interaction. And the reality is that in the modern day, most people spend more time communicating with the computer than, than directly with human beings, or at least through a computer. And I think that is really what care quarter is all about. I, I believe that learning how to cord, learning fluid corded character entry is just as important if like then basic um, like this should be taught in every school as a part of just English and um, and basic human computer interaction skills and basic keyboarding. And that's one of the reasons why we started our quarter club program in order to actually meet this mission we have to come at this problem from so many different angles and so many different facets. Not only do we have to make, you know, amazing, like super future focused tech, not only do we need to meet people halfway to make that barrier to entry low as possible and create awesome hardware um, that is compatible a bunch uh, across all different, you know, uh, uh, platform agnostic use cases. We also need to rethink the way that we teach computing and that we teach keyboarding and and we need to create the resources the curriculum and the the communities to to foster that um, that inclusivity and to empower anybody that that is motivated to learn to be able to do so affordably so that's that's a big part of the care quarter mission as well and why we've launched like i think four different open source products this year um, and why we have our nonprofit arm rqeq uh, why we started the .io training site um, and and so many other cool things in the pipeline that that we'll be excited to share in um, in the in the next year or so. To help people type at the speed of thought, which is a lofty endeavor, it also looks like they're not married to a single product to achieve that goal, as evidenced by the different technologies they have been producing. But will they go down in history as another one of those that tried, or will they revolutionize society by helping us put words on screens as fast as we can think? The latter, for sure. Real quick, first of all, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Second, I have a coupon code on the description below for the Caracorder site. I'm going to get commission for the sales that come off of that code, so if you decide to use it, thank you so much in advance. I appreciate you hanging out with me in this video, and I'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Clint. Here is Clint's code. If Clint has inspired you to purchase a Caracorder device, please use this code. Not only will this support Clint's content creation, but this is also going to give you, I think, a like a 15 percent discount, maybe even more than that. So, so use that code. Um, you can use it with any care quarter product, I think, and go support Clint, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching. I hope, I hope I wasn't, uh, too long in my rants, but uh, if you want to see more reaction videos like this, let me know. Um, I do have fun making these. Um, and yeah, I hope I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>